All right. We are on the SimCast episode 24. Today I am uh, guested here again by Mr. Casino himself. Welcome, sir. What's going on? So, <clears throat> I have to ask, have you gotten a chance to get in on the Alpha 1 testing yet? Uh, sort of. I have not mm-hmm. actually been able to play and participate, but I was told my invite is on the way. Right on. So, I'm I'm in, but I haven't logged in. Right on. That makes so much sense. Um, I got to say, like, from, from my perspective, I got to do a little testing last night. And then I've gotten to test the past couple weeks. And the only thing I'm going to say about it at this time is they are freaking leaps and bounds, man. I mean, from week to week, this is the one thing I'm the ple- the most pleased about is that it, whether we're talking like, is it aesthetically pleasing? If we're talking about the uh, my ability to function as a player and feel comfortable with my controls, I mean, all around environment to controls to itemization, uh, just aesthetics it, it, everything from the menu to how you drop is it, i mean week by week it's just leaps and bounds and i i'm gonna tell you man the one thing i've got to say right now is i don't know how they do it i don't know they, how they do it they have a big team and it's it's all they work on and uh, it sounds like they're they're experienced too so it sounds like uh they they can do quickly what but it would take other people a while to do. But that's that's very reassuring to hear is that they can get a lot of work done very quickly. Um, that's very promising. And I, I guess some of that must have to do with using that Unreal Engine is that so much of that is just ready to, to plug in and go. They just tweak the settings. and My mind comes back to Modular, which you were here for that discussion <laughs> with the Couch Nerd, I believe. We were sitting there talking about everything from uh, husbandry profession to to all of that. And it's just my idea, you know, I've said from day one, them using the Unreal Engine is going to have just that alone. I think it's going to have an impact on the genre if it's done right. And so what, what gives me so hope is all these developers are so experienced and every single one of them has at least one horror story from working on some other game where they were like, Oh, we realized eight months in, we wanted to do this and because we didn't have it set up in the first place to be able to do that, it was just such a crazy amount of work to to go back and make it work. But this time with this game, we've built that in from the get go, so we have the freedom to do that whenever we want. And it, like they've applied this to so many different things, like um, with the buildings and, and a destructible building system, like with uh, how you know all the the dye and the coloring and everything, all the all the customization is modular and all the character slots are modular, even down to like they built in a system to detect hackers and uh, gold farmers and bot accounts well before there are any of them. Like they're laying the foundation for so many things that they've learned from experience. Like, oh man, it would have been so much easier if we had been prepared for this. Mm -hmm. Like they've accumulated all that experience. So going in, this is like, this is like, let's make a game where, Everything we wish we had done right on previous projects, we do right. And it doesn't sound like they're saying no to anything. It sounds like any developer who's like, I think this could one day be a problem, but we can we can build it in now. Maybe we use it, maybe we don't. And it sounds like they're like, good enough for me, green light. I so I you know, I I'm I'm actually the most excited about the fact they're using the Unreal Engine because my experience is just a general gamer at, at all around. Like people, I mean, I remember the years when people are like, oh my God, Halo. And I'm like, I was never a big Halo fan because I was an Unreal Tournament fan. Like I played the shit out of Unreal Tournament. That was like my jam, man. And so I've been an Unreal fan for back in the day. And so I've always over the years thought to myself hey, in some portion, I'm not saying I was the first one with this idea clearly, but I've always wondered, I was like, you know, the Unreal Engine over time has been applied to so many different genres. I mean, you see it right, we see it in like Conan Exiles. And right now I'm probably going to draw a blank on the other games that I've seen it in. But I, I mean, it escapes me, but I mean, I can't think of how many games I've logged in on and it's like Unreal, Unreal, Unreal. And I'm sitting there going like, how many MMORPGs do you log into? And it's like Unreal. It's not, there's not very many. And so I've always wondered if it's that applicable to so, you know, if it applies to so many of these other games, why hasn't it really been just a focus for an MMORPG? And I, you know, I think that they, you're right, they've got that experience 
and they recognized where maybe the gold mine is and ways to make it even easier on them as developers instead of having to no. create so much you know off from scratch just use what if it didn't broke and it works yeah <laughs> yeah you know absolutely now i'm about to be completely technical like from a technical standpoint as ignorant as possible here i have no idea how much of this is uh uh, customizable, but so the one thing that I've I've seen very few MMOs do well, and even the ones that have done it well have not done it half as good as I've seen it in other things, uh, and that is like unit collision and hitboxes. Yeah, I would imagine like a, an MMO would have really gotten that right by now if it wasn't like deliberately not gotten exact for you know technical limitations, mm -hmm. but. Uh, and I, I can't remember offhand which games I've played that used Unreal Engine and which I haven't. I know I've played games that have used Unreal Engine. I just don't know which is which. But I worry that the Unreal Engine has something to do with, like, how hitboxes are calculated and, and how the unit collision is. And uh, and this is, like, standard in MMO. Like, I don't hold this against Ashes. This is literally, like, just about every other MMO I've played has done the same thing. But I really hope one day there's an MMO where characters don't seem to, like, slide off of one another or I hit just to the right of your arm, but you still get damaged because it was just close enough. Um, I know that's pretty ridiculous, but like I, I like games where like when two characters walk right at each other, like they both like bounce off each other and recoil. And it's like, well, there was something there when you were trying to walk. Right. And uh, and a one that once there's like a hundred people in an area, it's really hard to keep track of where everything is as a moving like collision object the entire time. So they, they just kind of have a system where it's like, oh, you just kind of slide around them. But uh, I, I hope they, they really polish up the collision detection just because, like, that's the number one immersion breaker for me. It's like when I run full speed at someone and then we just slide to the sides of one another. Yeah, dude, I, I totally agree with that. That drives me nuts, actually. I mean, that's probably one of my pet peeves when it comes to environment design. And I consider that environment design, even though it's really player design, because that can also happen with NPCs. It can happen with players. It can happen with items like uh, light posts and stuff, you know, or bushes or whatever is in the environment. And so you actually bring that up. It reminds me. So I had Delty on the show about a month ago, I think now. And when I had him on the show, one of the things we talked about was our concern with the hitboxes and action combat. And so because of what you're saying, I, I, I have a okay, so it's already been said by them that there are going to be um, there are things being designed because they're using the Unreal Engine that I think that Epic Games is actually even helping with because this is for their engine that they're creating things for. And so I think part of them working on revolutionizing the genre is also something that's going to in turn help revolutionize potentially the Unreal Engine. Um, and so I have, you know, I think that well, that's one of the concerns I have about action combat is right now it's that hitbox registration sort of thing and all that stuff being done. And again, like you said, having a ton of people in one spot and something like a siege battle with them all using potentially even an action oriented combat style. Granted, that's not going to be everybody, but with it being at least some in some capacity, the majority or part of the greater majority uh, younger MMORPG gamers, for example, maybe. Uh, I think that's definitely part of the culture of the younger generation, FPS games and stuff like that, more action-style combat, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. It's just a trend that I've recognized. I, I like action in some situations. But I think that's uh, kind of what I'm I'm wondering about is I think maybe that's the seven-month window we've got on Alpha 1, Phase 1, 2. It's like they recognize that and they need to really work on it. Yep, and I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, uh, like like we've said a few times, like they have not made a decision right. that I mm -hmm. like. They have given me zero reason to doubt them, mm -hmm. and uh, they've demonstrated I should have more confidence in them than any other development team I've seen. So, I I will not question them until I have something in front of me that I think is is going down the wrong path, and I haven't yeah. seen that yet. Yeah. But. Uh, but it, I, you know, it'd be cool. I'm, I'm just saying. Uh, here are the things I'm keeping my eyes out for that would just be an incredible breath of fresh air. But you know, it'd be cool to be on record saying like, "Oh, I hope they they get collision detection better than any other MMO." And then if we fast forward and it ends up like, "Oh, and they've got the best collision detection." Right. Of any MMO, you know, it's just 
more accolades for him. So be a true story. So, so we're gonna shift away from talking about Alpha One. I I am gonna say that uh, here in the coming. Uh, so I've been playing in the Alpha One so far. I've been taking down some notes. I've been doing a little bit of. Uh, I'll be honest. I've I've failed a little bit as a tester in reporting as many bugs as I should have, and I've I've probably succeeded more as a content creator because I've been making notes of the items, the abilities, how they function. Uh, partially because I want to be able to put some of that information out there for people. Well, let me um, pause you there. I mm-hmm. I don't know for sure, but I from what I understand, the the point of the stress tests yeah. and the, the point of the alpha one is not that those abilities are going to stay it's it's the functions of the abilities like when you aim this ability is there a lag before it lands does it appropriately calculate that it's hitting everyone even if people are in stealth you know things like that uh you know just just all it's not so much that i would expect like these abilities will make it to the live game or these items will make it to the live game it's just if we make an item does everything about the item work so down the road they'll make an item exactly the same and they might call it something different it might have a different graphic and it might have totally different numbers but it they'll just be changing those variables everything else about the item like when you equip it when you unequip it when it gets looted etc but i wouldn't put too much stock in what you're seeing in that game mode i i don't think that much of that is going to go live yeah i think it's more for the uh I'm basically making preparations for when they allow the masses in, so people have an idea of what's going on. In case and then your they, crew is going to be n- prepared, yeah, just yeah. prepared. Um, but you know, I, that's you're totally right, though. I think I think that the bigger picture and scheme here is, and this is me just saying to the people that are like, I don't want to play Ashes BR. I get it. I understand. It's not my idea of like what I prefer or whatever. But as a tester, I recognize that all of these things that you're able to put on in this BR mode, you're just testing the abilities for these guys. You're helping them, like Casino said, to understand how this is working. Is it working the way they want these abilities to work? And by picking them up at random, you're you're. I mean, it's random sampling in a sense. You're testing it, so it's it's good data for them. Really good data for them. And, and it's become a new thing. I like it. A lot of new games are are going literally the modular approach. Uh, so, like, there's a game I'm, I was looking at for a while called, I think it's called Identity Online mm-hmm. uh, or Identity, and it's just an MMO. And they were kind of doing the same thing. Like, there's going to be, like, a, a combat module. There's going to be, like, a, a driving module. There's going to be, like, a, a walking around the environment and and cr- setting up your home module, something like that. Um and, and it's where they get to test all of these systems in an isolated mm-hmm. environment. So the purpose of the BR isn't like, maybe we should make an Ashes of Creation BR, yeah. even though if it got super, super popular, I don't think they would take it away from people. Right. But it's not the mission. It's just this is the easiest. Like, we're trying to test combat. So if we just keep throwing people in and keep spawning them in and just, like, the only thing they have to do in there is combat. Mm-hmm. we're going to get the most concentrated combat data. Yeah. So I, I love the modular approach. Me and uh, We've talked about that a lot on here. Always comes up in our conversations, modular. <laughs> yep, it is. But, it, I mean, it's the right way to do it. And yeah. then uh, it's not only that, but so, like, uh, I, I played a lot of Rift. And Rift's, right. Rift had open-world PvP, mm. but then it had, uh, I forget exactly what they were called, but it was basically like a PvP battleground. And... It wasn't necessarily a BR, but it was like a team match. Like you, you all just keep instantly respawning until someone takes the enemy's base or the time runs out, whoever has more points. But it was just like a 10 on 10 or 15 on 15. But you would load it into a special PvP map, and that was just it. So while you were doing that aspect of the PvP, and that was like the main aspect of PvP, that was where you got like your PvP currency and your PvP points and rank and all that. It was kind of like a BR, even even though that was located inside of the MMO. It was like let's let's do some PVP and then you'd literally hop into matches and it became PVP team matches. So this aspect of BR is like, you know, it, it's, it's not quite the same, like open world PVP will be a slightly different skill set when you know, like I have the knowledge to take them on a giant long chase. And then I, yeah. you know, I know a special spot. Like I, I love using the environment for PVP. Uh, there was a, in, in Star Wars galaxies, which maybe I've, I've talked about that game on oh, this uh, podcast before. Yeah. Um, there, there was, I, I'll never forget there were a few things, but someone found uh, a thing. It was like a, like a 
two story thing, but but the first story was like all covered in rubble, so like you couldn't get in. You had to like go up the stairs and to be on the second floor. And most people oh, yeah. go up on that second floor and shoot down at everyone. This person found the exact right tiny little spot where if you like kept running at the corner, you would fall down under with where the rubble is, uh-huh. and then you no one could target you, but you could just shoot up at everyone. Phil. They were just, yeah, they were just going that spot, <laughs> light everyone up. And everyone's like, who, how is this guy killing me? How do I even reach him? So stuff like that. So there's there's little cheeky ways to use the environment in open world. So that that will still be its own thing. But uh, right. Battlegrounds type things are not, you know, it's not uncommon in, in an MMO. So All right. I like it. I don't even yeah, think it's do. like, I don't think they're like getting away from the, the mission at hand at all. I think it's just. Uh, I think it's to complement it. I think as long as they maintain it as a as something complementary to the core of what Ashes is, they're even if it blows up and it's still just complementary. It's like it's like World of Warcraft. You got Heroes of the Storm and Hearthstone and stuff, but it all comes back to Warcraft. Like, and that was originally the first thing was Warcraft, but Warcraft is the game, and and World of Warcraft is then now the game, and you know that's still the game. But these other things are are there to complement the universe, so to speak. And I think that in itself, I'm I'm I would love to have a uh, intrepid be like my go to for my gaming. That'd be fantastic. I'd be fine with that. Um, yep. And and there's a, a way to tie them all together. So like, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I could be a little bit off on this, but I know Star Citizen is currently doing the modular thing. But so they have like a a team deathmatch first person shooter style thing, which is how they're focus testing their combat. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they're going to get rid of that. I think that they're going to have that mode in addition to the main full game for some people are going to be like, look, I, you know, I just want to, I just want to go in there and PVP. I don't care about exploring, mm-hmm. having a ship or on a crew or whatever. Um, and so, you know, the, the people who play the main game can, can port into that yep. mode and bring some of the stuff from the main game and use it. But uh, people who are, just want to play it as like a, a team deathmatch shooter can go in and play it as that. So it's it's good to have uh, the ability to play it as the type of game you want to play. And uh, if you put the right connectivity, I think we talked about this. How like Eve Online had that that like spinoff first person shooter. You remember? Yeah, you mentioned it. Yeah, I never. I don't. I never played it, but you, you had mentioned it. Yeah, I had a buddy who was super into it. I think it was called like Dust Four One Five or Five One Four, something like that. But so that was like. A separate game like like eve is on a pc and this was on a console oh, wow. but even though they were like separate games they took place in the same universe mm-hmm. and um what would happen in the matches on the planets in the first person shooter game would impact like what what cities and what planets were under whose control in the mmo mm-hmm. so you could either like yourself be like All right, I'm, I'm hopping off this this mmo on the pc because I gotta, I gotta go turn around the situation on this planet in the first person shooter, and then you pick up your controller and you're playing in the same universe, just different game, different mm-hmm. way to play. Or you would communicate with them. So like while you're on the PC version, you're on voice chat with the people playing the other version of the game. Like, hey, can you guys, can you guys get this under control so we can make our move? So nice, nice. I love that interconnectivity, and and yes. so yeah, I hope if nothing else, I do something like that. Heck yeah, man. Um, I was going to say that's a you know, talking about way people play. That's a perfect segue into what our, our topic of today is. And granted, it's uh it's not a topic that's going to get a ton of love, but I here on the SimCast try my best to ensure that I'm touching base on every element I can possibly think of. And sometimes that means bringing, play, you know, guests on that can help round that experience down with their own experience, help to relate things to people. But talking about soloing content um, today's SimCast is called The Soloist, and um, it's called that because I recognize there's a core of players that like to play things solo. I mean, we could talk about soloing things in the capacity of, I like to run around and do my quests. Uh, I like to play, There's there are people that play the game completely solo and sometimes isolate away from communities in general, and I recognize that there are those players. Um, but there are, you know, you could be doing, you could solo as a player group content, and a lot, this is one of my favorite pastimes, um, I, I'd go back into somewhat slightly older content, and in WoW for World of Warcraft, for example, 
uh, I would go back and I would solo old raids. You know, granted, they weren't super old at the time, but part of the challenge for me that I found to be really fun was going back and soloing like a raid boss that like you were supposed to have a large number of people to kill, but going in there and developing a new method to defeat everything as one person, you know, on something that's slightly old content, but still can be a challenge. So I like to enjoy things like that. It's solo soloing it, trying to farm old mounts. Um, you know, whether it's PVP, sometimes going to run around doing, you know, world PVP and, you know, getting to the point where like I'm on a rogue, for example, and I'm wreaking havoc on, uh, you know, this, uh, small little town outside of a major city where the other alliances, you know, that's their domain going and doing that, then stealthing and then slowly seeing them bring their, their numbers in and, and gathering their forces and still being a force to be reckoned with, even with their growing numbers until finally they find me out and they extinguish Eventually my, get that beat down that catches up to you. That beat down that catches up to me. There's uh so many different ways that as a player we can play an MMORPG as a soloist. And uh, so what does it mean to be a solo player? What are some ways for you that you've enjoyed playing, uh, you know, content in a game as, as a solo person? Um, well, I actually have uh, like one of my, one of my favorite moments. Um, but I will say uh, my, my views on being a solo player, I'm, I'm going to be a little harsh on it. I, I totally get it. But I think that the entire idea behind an MMO mm-hmm. is to separate itself from the solo experience. And what makes a solo experience a solo experience, like if, if you really are passionate about solo, I feel like there are so many console games mm-hmm. where it's it's one player or something like Diablo where it's just you but, and then there's stuff you do with other people, but you right. just match up with random people. But I really think that the the spirit of an MMO is you don't have to go solo for this and and everything about MMOs is just coming up with more meaningful ways to work with a team so I I don't think you're and I apologize for people who are just super passionate solo MMO players but I don't think that MMOs are the genre to be a solo player when every other style of game really caters better to solo players but that doesn't mean there should be nothing you're able to do solo. Right. So, um, so a couple things uh, I, I do like when uh, there's like uh, quests or something that are specific to an individual. So, like uh, for an example, um, there would be a, a like in, in galaxies they have this really cool concept. I always love this thing. There would uh, just be this random old man that would sometimes walk in this desert, but like you, there was no discernible pattern or formula to know when to expect him and he could be in this giant area so you would just be running around that giant area for just hours of your life day after day for months he might not even be spawned and you're searching high and low and i I think i spent like three months looking for this guy and when you find him he gives you this this mission and it's it's just for you Mm -hmm. and when you complete that mission you got this ring and what that ring would do is once every 24 hours you could use just a revive. You were dead and you could just activate that ring and pop back up and go about your business. It was like a really awesome thing to have. But um, like once he he talked to someone, he was gone. So like, although there might be a few other scavengers out there searching for him, a lot of people are like, I'm not even going to waste my time with that. I've got better things to do. But that was something aimed at like, go solo and go do that. You you weren't going to bring like your 20 man ranging party to go talk to this guy. So I liked that, um, and uh, so like uh, Rift had like these things called cairns hidden all over the world, um, and so I, I don't know how often it was, but they were like well, well hidden in in places that you had to do like crazy terrain feats of like climbing a mountain or diving to the bottom of a lake, um, you know, through this like passages like really tough to find spots to find these cairns, and then they had really good loot in them. Um, but like once someone claimed that loot, you know, it would take a, I don't know, let's just say like a few hours for that loot to refill. And once you'd already claimed it, you couldn't go back and get it. So there's no point in you going back. Mm-hmm. Um, but so like there would be no point in bringing your alliance to go loot mm-hmm. that thing because once someone picks up the stuff that's in it, it's empty for the next few hours. Right. So that was, again, like they, they put in little things to cater 
to the solo player. And I hope we see that. But my my favorite, because your, your initial question was, what was like your favorite moment as a solo player? Yeah. So in Galaxies, I had this horde of resources I'd been saving and saving and saving for PvP. And they they gave me this one item that uh, the idea behind the item, like you, it inside of a, a story quest, it basically like doubled your everything. It made you a complete god for the purpose of that story quest. And then when you left, you could use that one more time outside of the quest. You got wow. one use. There's no way to get another one. It's just one time you can just go back to God mode. And uh, I I had that. And then I was like one of, if not the top PvP -er on my server. The point I was going to quit. And I had like all these old items that like allowed you to heal more than other people that you couldn't even get anymore. So I just was like, as loaded as you could be and all i did all day every day was pvp so even without all these items i was pretty formidable the day that i decided i was quitting the game i was like let's go have some fun i ran into the pvp battleground solo i popped that thing that <laughs> gave me god mode i loaded everything up i was like no holds barred it's so like the average amount of health at that point for a player was like eight thousand. Mm -hmm. i ran in there with twenty three thousand on a damage <laughs> character and they like it was a pp battleground and most people would be in groups there's like a group of like eight enemies that were all grouped i charged the group head on one verse eight i killed like two or three was able to get out came back killed a couple more one of the first guys i killed respawned i killed him again and then i was still able to to make it out and, and go fight some other groups and i just like i will always have that that day of glory where one of them in the group messaged me and he was like holy shit how many of us did you just kill <laughs> uh but that that felt great awesome I one man army i love moments like that where you're just like bring on the horde yeah bring it and you're like i have vanquished you all <laughs> like, 1v8 let's go this i love it thing. or like you know here's another example of like okay this is and this is like soloing within the parameters of still being group content like an mmorpg like a battleground and wow like i have gone into like and this was before rated battlegrounds were even a thing I, I was in there and granted this look look i understand this wasn't a problem with balance at the time but i was totally going shock it in when it was not really a thing and shock it in basically what that means is holy shock is this ability that a holy paladin has and what it is, is it's like it's basically this instant burst heal that can be used. It's uh, I forget the priest's equivalent, but it's not important. But it's this burst instant cast heal that's on cooldown, and you can use it every three to four seconds, something like that, whatever it was. Um, but they had re released, uh, I think it was like the pre patch to the next expansion, right? And it was when that whole event situation was going on. Anyway, I went into the rated battle or not rated battle, a normal battleground, and I went in there and I realized after testing it a little bit that um, on my holy paladin, if in, when I was healing in there, that if I wanted to, if I swapped my gear out and I gave myself enough crit, that I would just smash people with that because <laughs> it could be used not only on healing people, but it could be used on enemies as damage as well. And oh, so, wow. yeah, and <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> Granted, even balanced, it's still, it's, for a healer, it's a decent uh, damage ability. But you sacrifice that and not being able to heal other players. So, uh, but I remember that I I would, <laughs> uh, the other team was was doing okay, but I went to their, their spawn point where they would resurrect. And as typical. Oh, no, you were that guy. <laughs> I can't do. <laughs> look, I understand. I was, look, I'm sorry to. I'm not sorry. It was, it was, man, it's it a was, cyber bully. It, it was, it was, they're like, but Sim, you're the light bringer. Not on this day, friends. And it was well warranted. <laughs> they had killed me repeatedly and I had enough because they were zerging. And I was like, okay, if you're going to zerg around in what was it called? It's, uh, oh, it's the one with the four points. Uh, it's the BC content one. I don't remember the name. But anyway, Drain I Ruins, all that. Someone's going to correct me in the video, I'm sure. You know what I'm talking about. Eye of the Storm, maybe? Anyway, uh, anyway, so I would go, I went there, I, I got smashed up because I was healing the group and I was doing a really good job of killing us that they finally decided they were just going to coordinate and everybody was gunning for me every time. 
and they just kept smashing me and smashing me, and I'm like, I'm done. The light bringer takes the mantle off. I went over to their spawn point. I was like, the second one of you dies and tries to make it to your little Zerg group, I'm smashing you. And literally, they kept trickling out, and I was like, boom, holy shock, boom, holy shock. And it was like clockwork. Sure, I had to throw a judgment here and there and a and a hammer to, to stun them or whatever from time to time. But essentially, like that thing was up so often, I could almost one-shot them. It was either a one-shot to the baddie or, or it was a, a holy shock plus a judgment and I would end them. And I mean, it was so gratifying. But to me, that was within normal normal combat that sort of stuff can still exist even out even when they're balancing at their best when you got rogue classes and stuff like that that's well, uh so mm, tasty. on this note i'm gonna suggest we we stay on this topic which is getting away <laughs> from the main topic but this is clearly like the more compelling conversation is just the crazy things we've done in games and this is what people can can connect with yes um so i, I do want to just throw out like uh I would imagine you have some good stories. I definitely have a few. Um, so I, I think we should go that route. Uh, it's okay. The, the other route's very minimal anyway. We'll tie it in at the end. It'll work just fine. Um, but so on that note, <laughs> there was a there was a day where uh, uh, I... So I had a history of getting reported because I... not like There's no way to say this without just being a total bragger, but I was very, very good at PvP. Mm -hmm. So I would get reported often... And one of the customer service reps was my buddy, uh, you know, just whenever I had an actual customer service issue, I wrote in and this guy was always like super cool about it. And uh, you could you could like PM them in game because they would be like walking around as characters when they were logged in. So uh, I had a reputation with this guy. And so whenever I would get reported, like it got to a point where this guy would tell me, like, yeah, you just got reported again. Um, so like I knew like, oh, I must have really kicked some ass there. I got reported again. <laughs> but of course, I was never cheating. Right. So, you know, it's just salty kids. Um, and so there was a day where, uh, uh, I, a little bit of background info on this. So I was playing a class, uh, and you had to choose, uh, early on before you knew what they did between something brown or something blue. And the brown one was for evil and the blue one was for good, but you could pick either. And so I was like dedicated to evil, but you you'd always prefer something blue to something doo doo brown. I was one of the few people I was like, look, it's the evil thing to do to go with the brown one. I'm going with the brown one. I was in the minority. And uh, later on down the road, that ended up paying off because the brown one ended up doing a special kind of damage that people did not really have any resistance to. Oh, wow. So I ended up being able to do like a lot of burst. But so I was playing a class that could uh, deflect any incoming ranged abilities for a short window of time. And then separate from that ability, uh, I had an item that if you were out of combat, you could use once a day to just fully recover. Wow. The point being like after a big battle, mm -hmm. you could just use this item and, and fully recover. So I, one of the more impressive solo stunts I ever pulled off was, uh, you know, people would always talk smack and, uh, you know, oh, I could beat you. I could, I could beat you, whatever. And so I, you know, duel people and no one ever really beat me, <laughs> but, uh, I, so I used to just really try to push the envelope and, uh, and, and to be fair, I was like a slight alpha class because right. I I had been an actual alpha class. Like it was designed as an alpha class originally. And then they changed the game so that they didn't want an alpha class, but they didn't want to take alpha class away from the people who had it. So they just gave us like a few items where we were a slightly better version of one of the existing classes. Yeah. But, but so I was technically like 20-ish percent better than other people. But so I challenged... This, this guy who had been talking smack, I challenged him to a 2v1 while naked. <laughs> uh, so nice. as you can imagine, I would die very quickly. And yeah. so this is how I, I pulled this off. And I, I told, before I, I went into it, I was like, I know I can outplay these guys. I messaged the customer service rep. I said, I am probably going to get reported for this. <laughs> just, just a heads up. But you might want to tune in because I'm going to enjoy this. As soon as we start the match, they're like, I'm a melee class. So they're yeah. thinking like, oh, so we'll just go in melee. Yeah. There's two of us. One of him, he's naked. This will be a piece of cake. I immediately <laughs> bail, whip out a gun and start shooting them, which is not doing much. But they're standing there with their melee weapons in their hand like, what the hell is going on? And I'm just getting free damage. I'm shooting them because they were not expecting that at all. <laughs> so it takes them a few seconds to go, oh, okay, you, you want to shoot? We'll shoot. So they pull out their ranged weapons. As soon as I see the ranged weapons come out, switch back to melee, right. throw on the thing that deflects all incoming ranged attacks, bum rush them. Nice. 
And now they're using their guns. It's not doing anything. I have a, another couple of seconds where they, oh, hold on, let me switch back to the melee weapon. That gives me enough time to maul one of the guys, the weaker guy. And then um, I've mauled the weaker guy, but now I'm kind of low because I was still getting hit by two people while naked for about half that time. <laughs> we had an ability that allowed you to cloak. When you cloaked, you broke combat. So I cloaked. I used my one time a day, full heal when out of combat, wow. pop back out of stealth, mauled the second guy, wow. naked 2v1 achieved. Awesome. And they were pissed. Awesome. Uh, but I was like, the, the, this is... This is why I get the big bucks, boys. Yes. And uh, and and I got confirmation <laughs> like two minutes later. The CSR goes, oh, yeah, you, you absolutely got reported. That is fantastic. I love that. See, That's a win, man. I love, I love, here's the thing about, so, you know, part of what you had said earlier is like, you, you know, you're going to really, your, your input is being a solo player genuinely a solo player that doesn't in, get involved in community doesn't engage in a lot it could come as a hindrance there are a lot of ways that you can excel as a one person in a solo situation against all odds and th things like that those are the ways that you can find your niche in 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 a game and i love it like i i even in raid content like i remember and this is i've, I've probably used this story here on, on the simcast before I'm sure because when I think of an MMORPG, this is it now. In this regard to playing solo, I'm I'm talking about it in the context of in a two tank situation in a raid. When if you don't have two tanks, you should not be able to make it. And Grant, this is like no one else. This doesn't say that discredits anybody else. There, it was a raid group thing. But I was in a two tank situation. It was uh, it was a raid um, in Ice Crown Citadel for World of Warcraft, the Wrath of Lich King. And in this situation on Lady Death Whisper, it was very shortly after release. It was a very tough fight. What she would do is she would essentially the tanks over time would be able to hold less and less aggro or hate, and you couldn't hold her on you without swapping tanks because you had to let that kind of cool down so you could maintain. Otherwise, you would just you would dramatically lose your ability to hold aggro at all. And in and the thing I love about being a tank is it's all about those odds like you explained in that 1v2 situation. Or you could even say a 1vx situation. And I've done this in PvP and in this situation in a raid, this the other tank died. Of course, there was no battle res left because some... some Dweedle decided well, to good for nothing. use it on some AOE. rando that wasn't important. And some so can't dodge. <laughs> yeah. Someone who stood in the fire. I mean, you know, something like that. And, and, and the other tank went down and it's just me there as a tank. Granted, I'm not alone, but you feel very alone in that situation because yeah, yeah, your yeah. job is to hold her attention. So no one else gets it. And they don't, the rape doesn't get wiped. And one of my most favorite moments in an MMORPG was as as the as the raid leader and as the off tank in this situation taking on the main tank role, not having someone else to swap to, Lady Death Whisperers going hammer ads are all over the place, calling out every, you know just that the hunter misdirect, which basically essentially redirects aggro onto me, therefore giving more aggro, therefore me able to hold her longer, just long enough to where I'm solo taking it and we kill her, we get it down. It, I love situations like that. Uh, all against the odds, they are not in your favor. Overwhelmingly, you should not be able to make it. In your situation, that shouldn't be able to do that. But skill triumphs. She, like sheer will and skill, and the desire to to survive those odds and, and that outcome being what happens is to me, I love it. And there are so many ways that someone can enjoy going solo now in ashes this is going to present a very interesting situation for the dark-hearted villains out there or the ones who decide to go dark mode for a day and in gaining corruption it is and so in in my experience with the devs i, I went to the paxos meetup and everything and it, if there's one thing that is super super clear like hardwired into their philosophy they are big on community they prioritize community above all they want as many things tied to community as possible so i i suspect that if you are fully dedicated to being totally solo 
I think there's going to be too many perks to working with a guild for one thing or another and too many perks for, for, you know, doing raids and stuff. And, and so like, even, uh, and, and I can just say this generally about MMOs, like even if you are like a true lone wolf, you have to have a network of people. I've never succeeded without a network of people because when you make friends with just the right potion guy, he gets you the, the newest potions that people just figured out how to make mm -hmm. right when they can start making them and, and for a decent price because you're helping them out with the materials he needs. Mm -hmm. And and when you're friends with you know just the right armor smith, then, then he prioritizes your crew for the newest armor. So it like it comes down to yes. a lot of networking. So it's even as the most successful solo person, you are going to need a big network of people helping you because you can't be master armor smith master weapon smith master potion maker master siege weapon maker you know whatever it is like you it, no one can do everything at once at all that's that's the whole point is is relying on different people for different things so i i think there will be considerable challenges and ashes to to trying to to avoid having to work with other people i get that some gamers are antisocial, but i really think the whole idea of this game is to drive you in interact with other people but i will say that i do expect fully to see something like mercenary guilds right. where it's like we all work together like we have a code amongst our crew but it's a loose code it's like a you know whatever it is like get your donations in everyone do this once a day whatever it is but outside of like we are meeting the minimum requirements to get the same bonuses as other alliances right. we have no loyalty yeah like you can you can kill someone in our guild mm -hmm. like you're, you know, you can jump into anyone else's raid for, for pay. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's going to be the closest thing we'll see to solo is like mercenary groups. Um, but even then just like a full on mercenary company, I think would be, uh, would be very profitable. And I, 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 for example, I have, uh, some viewers that want to start up a, a, a pirate gang. <laughs> So uh, I don't think they'll have many friends, but I expect they'll have naval dominance. <laughs> naval dominance, right? You know, the you what you mentioned too, it actually reminds me of something. Uh, I actually had gotten some messages. I get DMs and stuff here randomly with people, random people with different ideas and stuff. And someone would, was like, you know, had, I think they had mentioned, they had contacted me because of Virtue, which is the guild I'm, I lead or whatever. And they were... Basically, I mean, there's people that have left and right kind of dropped like, hey, looking for alliances. And, you know, I'm 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 very picky as as a leader. Um, it's part of why our community grows very smallly or smallly. It grows. <laughs> it's why we're small and we grow slowly there. Dweedle. Slowly, slowly, God. but selectively. So you're, yes. you're getting top tier recruits. Yeah. but They're trickling in because yeah. for every one you say yes to, you have to say no to 10. Yeah. Or yeah, pretty much. And and I think that that's part of what, I mean, that's just my thing. I'm a quality over quantity person and that's what I seek. And so, you know, but I, I recognize that in this game, essentially, whether you're trying to do it on your own, I've had mercenary guilds hit me up that are like, Hey, we're, our goal is to basically be a guild for hire or, you know, find our members and hire us to do things or to help you with certain things like uh, castle sieges or, whatever you're looking for, you know, so I, I think that people, uh, I think that people are going to have a lot of different opportunities in how they want to uh, impact the world and how the, how they want their role to play out, whether that role is uh, our guild, me as a player. I think that you're right. People are going to have the opportunity to play solo in a lot of ways, but the only way that you're going to really benefit and the only way you're really going to have a full opportunity to all experiences in the game, there's not, it's not like you're just going to be able to, and I don't know if this is going to be a thing, but just queuing for a dungeon. I, I feel like that their, their ideology is more of, you know, organically you find people, you, right. you, you group up with people, you develop relationships. And even though you're on yeah. your own, I know this guy or I have allies at least. And so I can join their raid group or join their PVP initiatives. Or, I mean, there's so many things like even with castle sieges and guild wars and stuff. I mean, they've talked about how, you know, in a guild, not, you can't do everything. And that's the thing too. This isn't a game where you can do it all. It, it's, it's made for individuals to shine at that one thing that they could just be, 
dominant in, whether it's PvP, crafting a sword, making a potion. There's going to be the opportunity for you to be the person people can go to for this thing. And so in that in itself, I feel like for the people who who tend to go on their own, that provides you an opportunity to still do that. But this game is geared toward, and I've seen people ask questions like at pa in former PAXs, I think it was like, was it PAX East, I think, last year or this year? I think it was PAX East. And I remember some, there was some lady had stood up and had asked about what are some of the things you're doing for people who don't want to be part of communities to be able to enjoy the game. And I remember that they, their, their, their answer reflected sort of what we're saying. But the thing is, is you've got to remember people like there is a capacity for you to enjoy things on your own. But an MMORPG is a massively multiplayer online role playing game. While you have your role to play and in a community and solo as a soloist doing your own thing, it's a massively multiplayer online game for a reason. It is meant to allow people to immerse themselves in communities together and and that togetherness and community is is a fundamental part of what the genre is so if you're playing the game and you want to do your own thing they're trying to bring the heart and soul back to the mmorpg genre and part of them doing that is really being focused on community and ensuring that that is at the core and that's not a solo a one-player game it's just not yep it's not, but so uh, the, uh, the happy medium, so to speak, is you don't have to be everyone's friend. You don't have to be a politician. And uh, so I, I think this will kind of tie it all together pretty nicely. I don't know if I've told this this story on this uh, podcast before. I might have, because like of all of my MMO stories, this is probably the one I repeat the most. But uh, it is absolutely possible to have like a small, tight-knit group of people that can accomplish a lot versus necessarily just giant amounts of volume like if you know just like anything like a, a a company of 10 really qualified workers can accomplish more than 80 people who don't really know what they're doing um maybe not in terms of just raw brute force what they can throw up but but ultimately what they produce can can just work smoother but so one of my favorite memories of all time in an mmo uh, i i had a similar recruiting uh uh policy to you where i was like you know my our, I want our alliance name to mean something, and I want everyone with this tag to be respected as a PvPer. So if you, we don't respect you as a PvPer, I'm not going to let you in. As a result, there are alliances way, way, way bigger than ours, but literally, like one of ours is worth four of theirs. And so there was a day, uh, the maximum group size you could have is eight. And for whatever reason, there was a day where this one alliance, uh, where they let anyone in if they were this one particular species. So they just had this giant horde and they just decided like, let's go do some PVP. And they brought like a hundred people to this city and then just all flagged on for PVP. No one could do anything because like, you know, there'd be like little skirmishes of like, maybe on a really heated day, it would come to like a 20 on 20. These guys just had a hundred people. And no one was like, had another hundred people they could call to make it happen. And like, as people started showing up, like like people were trying to get something going, but so like someone was like, well, I've, I've got 10 guys online, we'll come. And so then it's like a 20 versus 100 and they're still just getting mauled. Mm -hmm. And uh, But we never backed down from a fight. We were like the, the Spartans, the 300, like didn't matter what the odds, we're gonna try to find a way. And uh, so one of the other alliances that was our faction contacted us and they're like, we desperately need backup. They are everywhere. And I was like, all right, boys, let's let's go see what we can do. And sure, as you can imagine, like, the second we loaded in, like, we loaded in dead. Um, they were just, like, a sea of red, as far as I can see. But so uh, uh, I got to give credit to my, my alliance mate, came up with this brilliant plan. But there was a building that all the way in the back of the building, there was a room, and, like, there was nowhere to go. Like, there was just the, the door into that room is the same door out of that room. And it's in the back. And so we came up with this plan. We are going to have everyone invest in every kind of AOE they have. Oh, uh, we had people hopping on a second accounts oh, to have God. every kind of like the guy throwing acid, the guy throwing lava, the guy throwing the poison clouds, the guy throwing the traps. And we're like, we are just going to concentrate everything in this area and see what happens. And uh, the only other piece we needed was someone to 
to bring the horde. And so we had someone who was that class where they could deflect yeah. for a short time, everything coming in ranged. And he had the ability to run as fast as you could, like best case scenario, people could catch up with him, like, like keep up with him, but no one was just going to like stop him in his tracks. So we're like, all right, go, go be the bait. And he would run out there and, you know, they're just standing around. Cause like almost no one can oppose them, you know, just hundred V five, maybe whatever they see red, like, all right, let's go squash it. And so they see him and they're like, all right, let's go get him. And he takes off. I'm like, Ooh, a runner, some action. They're happy to chase after him. Like, Hey, we have something to do. And uh, he runs all the way back into this building. They're shooting at him, but he's deflecting everything coming in range. And he's just hauling ass. The horde follows him. He runs into this room and the horde starts piling into this room, literally the concept behind 300. And <laughs> they walk into a wall of every form of AOE. And it's just, Body, 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 body. The bodies just start piling up, and we literally killed every last one of them. Eight versus, it probably wasn't actually 100, but eight versus the biggest group we'd ever seen. Every last one of them tried to get in that room and died. And it, like once they started realizing, like the, the slow guys in the back started realizing, like everyone in front of me is dead. By that point, we had done enough to be like, we can leave the room and chase down the, the survivors. And so we ended up taking every last one of them out and we were getting messages from those guys. Like, all right, that was a hell of a plan. We got to get, <laughs> we got to get, that was good. Oh but my that was God. Incredible. And so that, that's something you can do. If you, if you have a small trustworthy crew, you, you can accomplish quite a bit without having to have a network of a hundred people. So I'm going to, I'm going to So what you just said, I'm going to share. This is my one last story. And I have to share it because in the Elder Scrolls Online, I'm like, when you were like, we go into all of our AOE, I was like, no, no. That's that Zergling mentality, not necessarily yours, but in because your yours is numbers and quality and everything. But in the Elder Scrolls Online, a lot of the EP, Ebonart Pact, yeah, I'm talking to you guys. If you play the Elder Scrolls Online, I'm talking to you. And you know who you are. All of the Zergling mentality that go in, in the Elder Scrolls Online, if you ever played that, no, but I'm familiar. All right. So in Cyrodiil, the p massive PvP zone, the goal is to, you know, keeps and all that. And you've got to hold six keeps around the center island, which is where the Imperial City is at to become Emperor. And so in that game, you know, in order to become Emperor, you got to be the person with the highest alliance points, which I've gotten before. I'm a former Emperor. you got to be the person who had the highest alliance points whenever your alliance took the Imperial City, capturing those six keeps it surround the that center island and you do that in in a very coordinated way but at the i have come and go from the elder scrolls online i am not happy with where it's at i don't like the state of the game it, it pisses me off with their cancer shop with their damn all focused all of the items the best stuff you get in the game is all in the cash shop like you don't really get it from in the game or raids or anything like that and so I can't really play it that much anymore. When I could play before it was completely ruined or to, in my mind, completely ruined and catering to the super casual player base, the people that were going to buy their stuff in their shop. Okay. <laughs> I'm stopping now. But my point is, is back in Cyrodiil, I'd come back to the game after my first big break. I think it was somewhere around the time of one Tamriel. And there were some sets that were out and I used a frost staff, Destro staff, and a sword and board and people were zerging around it. And when I came back, I was very disheartened by this is the way play, they're playing PVP. Now it was less focused on capturing the keeps and that keep combat and that those fights that could go on forever. I mean, it could go on for an hour or so. And you were just like, yes, or I was, and I came back and it was a lot of baiting the, the, these like feeders to just trickle into their zergs as they circled around and just rolled over them with, with Destro ulties, which is massive AOE, of you know just cycling of aoe abilities and so i was like i hate this and so i was like what can i do to find some justice for myself and much in lightbringer fashion on my templar i went uh ritual of retribution which is an aoe heal that also puts down a dot on the ground i it went with my sword and board abilities to absorb as much damage as i could projectiles to heal from um, I also absorbed in a damage bubble that would burst upon, you know, taking so much damage. Uh, I went and on my Destro, I had my Destro ulti, which would freeze and put a whole lot of like 
Uh, it was a very overpowered ability, by the way. And it would put down it hit everybody and slow them down. So I would basically go and I'd be like, all right, I would watch that Zerg circling around just stomping everybody out. And I would watch them and I could just by watching them tell when they had used up all of their ultis and they were in a phase where they were basically killing and running over the stragglers but hadn't quite gotten to the point where they were up on their all their AoE abilities again. They were kind of replenishing it. And so that was my moment. And so right as they were getting ready, some of them were able to use their AoE abilities again. I would go run in there after bubbling up hardcore, right? Absorb everything and heal while I'm charging in. I pop a potion of immovability so they can't stun lock me in the process. Go roll in there. And then I hit my Destro ulti that starts to lock them all down. And any of the damage they're doing to me is either healing me or reflecting back to them. So literally, I allowed them all to kill themselves as they tried oh, to kill me. And I took oh, out like 40 or 50 people. Geez. And I was like, justice. And that was so if you ever played the Elder Scrolls online and you were EP and sometimes DC, Daggerfall Covenant, Evan Art Pact, I'm talking to you guys. And there was some AD guy that you noticed would kill your whole Zerg. And you didn't really understand what happened until you looked in the death recap. That was probably me. You're welcome. <laughs> and and on that note, uh, that's 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 that is how you can, in some capacity, enjoy solo content in within the realm of what is designed. I like moments like that. That is where I shine. Whether it's the tanking things and not dying, whether it's taking on the odds of a zerg and not dying, I live for it. That's my thing, and I can't wait to get into that in ashes. Like, oh, it's gonna be a great time, man. I agree. Yeah, I love it. I love I love the stories that Casino shared too about his that going naked and rolling everybody. That's that's awesome. I love stuff like that, man. That is what I live for in an MMORPG. At whether it's in a group setting where you take those odds on, uh, become a dragon rider, which I know is one of your ambitions. No, um, it is. Yeah, the, the ambition, the title ambition. Right. I mean, it, it will happen. I will stop at nothing. Yes. I, I love it. And so I'm looking forward to it. So make your alliances, choose your friends and recognize that there's a very good opportunity that the tides will change. Friendships will diminish and alliances will falter. And you will have to make new alliances and that's meaningful combat in ashes of creation. But we're not quite to that MMORPG yet because at this time we're currently in a BR state with ashes of creation testing. Um, they've got, a lot of really great things. I am I am planning on putting out a a guide of sorts for individuals who are like, okay, so when I step into this and I get the opportunity to, what the heck is going on? How can I play it? We can't share the visual content yet, but we can share all the information. We can talk about what we've seen, talk about the way things are played. Excuse me. Uh I am actually in the in the form. I talked to Casino about this re just earlier too before we started today. Um, I've gotten to the point where right now the Simcast it premieres on Twitch on Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, and it goes to YouTube the following day, about 24 hours later on YouTube. That's where you'll find it. I am creating compendiums on Twitch where you'll find all of my content from, you know, dungeon guides, raid guides, class builds exploration achievements i mean all the stuff you could think of all the general good times and highlighting everything i'm working on a crusader vault uh where people have an opportunity to you know get anything from their you know game time on ashes to potentially embers or or whatever i am able to to gift to to people that want to play the game there are a lot of fantastic things that are going to be available to the official content creators people like casino and myself our channels are places where you will be able to go hang out. And just because of being a part of our communities, you will have the opportunity to reap some rewards that you just won't get on normal content creator streams that are streaming. So there are perks to being on one of our channels or any of the other official content creators. Obviously, I'm saying on our channels because we're cool. But with that being said, do uh, you have anything else you'd like to share as far as this con uh, content is concerned today? Hi. I uh, I think uh, I think we we yeah. we gave him enough to Health. to mull over today. Yes, we have. 
And on that note, sir, would you like to let everybody know where you're at, where your domain is, where you reign, and they can find you? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I am on twitch.tv slash casino. Casino, as you can see on the screen, K-H-A-S-I-N-O. Also, youtube.com slash casino. Uh, my primary focus right now is a mobile game called Marvel Strike Force. But as I can uh, share more Ash's content, I plan on transitioning over. I have been Alpha Zero testing, for example, but I can't... Uh, I can't share any of the footage or anything from that. Mm -hmm. But uh, if, if nothing else, I, I have rooms on my Discord where you can hang out and talk Ashes with uh, a lot of the other people on my server who are who are going to be playing it. Um, if you want to be, you know, have an alliance that you're in right away, uh, if you're not already going to be joining Submerged Alliance, uh, feel free. Um, we uh, we are building up to take over and. Uh, I also have a mystery bag on my Twitch channel yeah. where you can win completely for free one or two months of Ashes of Creation subscription, completely paid for by me. Nice. So uh, if nothing else, while you're hanging out and chatting Ashes, maybe you can get a few months there you go. Uh, on my dime. So uh, there you go. come check it out. Yeah. So I am C. Morg. I've been your host. All of my links will be down in the description. Uh, my domain's mostly Twitch. You can catch me on Twitter. I'm active on there pretty much daily. Uh, YouTube also. Uh, Discord's also down in, in the links and descriptions. Uh, also, one one last thing I'm gonna say is all of the Simcast. We are now at 24 episodes. I'm like, I'm not gonna lie, 25 is gonna be a hell of a thing. I, I feel like I need to celebrate that somehow because I don't even know how many months that's been now. But 25 is a lot of hours of. We have over 25. It'll be probably 26 or 27 hours of footage of actual time that can be watched with all the sim casts and these past five i would say five five to eight have been probably my favorite i really feel like i've gotten my footing um gotten a firm handle on this whole podcast thing uh so in regard to podcasting you might find something new on the horizon shortly all of the sim casts will be streaming 24 7 outside of either hosting or writing awesome people like casino uh, who have been supportive of my content as well, or, um, you know, just anyone else in the community or myself streaming, whatever. But you'll find all these simcasts live on Twitch all the time if I'm not up or hosting someone. So definitely come check them out. Sometimes I'm there while I'm working, able to actually talk back. So as well as some of the other community members. So on that note, everybody, it's been a fantastic episode. Casino, thanks so much for being here again. And... I look forward to next week. Episode 25 is on the horizon. You all have a great week, and I will see you next time.